I'm Michael Dechter, Your Honor, family, friends, and friends of the walrus. I feel very welcome to be at this special celebration of Canada in this very special place, both the Canadian Museum for Human Rights and Winnipeg, my birthplace and spiritual home. We celebrate not only 150 years of Canada, but also 35 years of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In 1912, my grandfather, Harry Dechter, and his family were driven out of their home in Russia by a pogrom and by Cossacks. They sought a better country and a better life, and they found it right here in Winnipeg. My father, Percy Dechter, was born in 1918 on Christmas Day. He was a very bright, hardworking student. He grew up on McRae in the North End, he attended St. John's High. His father, my grandfather, Harry, drove a streetcar for the Winnipeg District Electric Company, did participate in the general strike. Um, he and his wife, Edith, had four children, three sons and a daughter. Uh, Percy, my father, was the oldest. No one in the history of our family had ever attended or graduated from university. In 1935, Percy graduated at the top of his high school class, but his family lacked the financial means to support his university enrollment. The transformative event in Percy's life and in the fortunes of our family was the Isbister Scholarship. The $50 per year provided by the Isbister enabled him to attend university. Eventually, he graduated with the gold medal in medicine, Later, he became an orthopedic surgeon. For over 30 years, Percy cared for thousands of patients with broken or displaced bones. He was a proud partner of the Manitoba Clinic. All three of Percy's siblings also attended university. Oscar became a family doctor, Marge became a nurse, and Alan a pediatric surgeon. Since Percy, everyone in our family has graduated from university, myself, my five brothers and sisters, and in the next generation, 12 of our children. Percy would often tell me when I was a child, without the Isbister scholarship, I would not have been able to go to university. One day, my curiosity set me on a path to discover, discover who this Isbister, our benefactor, really was. As I researched Isbister, I was startled. Alexander Kennedy Isbister, was Métis. He was born in 1822 in Cumberland House, Manitoba, north of the Paw. His father was a postmaster in the service of the Hudson Bay Company, and he was killed by a bull in Norway House when Alexander was 14. His mother was Cree and the sister of Arctic explorer William Kennedy. Isbister was educated in Scotland and at St. John's School in Winnipeg. He joined the Hudson Bay Company and served at Peel River in the Arctic. He left the Hudson Bay Company because his promotion was blocked by the prejudice of Sir George Simpson of the Red River Colony. Isbister moved to England. He became both a lawyer and an educator and a champion of Métis rights. In London, he served as dean of a teacher training college and editor of a prominent education journal. Isbister was also a major philanthropist, establishing not only the Isbister scholarships, but donating his library to the University of Manitoba on his death in 1888. It became the basis of the University of Manitoba's library. Isbister never married and left, according to the history books, no heirs. I strongly disagree. My father and hundreds of other recipients of the Isbister scholarship are truly heirs of Isbister, as well as their children and grandchildren whose lives were forever changed for the better by his philanthropy. I celebrate and I thank this remarkable Métis benefactor of so many. I thank Alexander Kennedy Isbister for his generosity that transformed the lives of my family and so many others. The gift of education is transformative and Isbister clearly understood this truth. 
In the 1930s, however, tragedy befell the University of Manitoba. The board chair, a prominent Mani Winnipeg businessman, stole the university endowment, including the Isbester bequest, and squandered the money. He was eventually arrested, tried, convicted, and jailed, but the lost money could not be recovered. The government of Manitoba continued the Isbister scholarships, but the value was no longer transformative. The Isbister lives on, but provides only a small fraction of what is needed to attend university. One of my life goals is to see the Isbister scholarships restored to their original transformative value. Imagine if the top graduating students in every high school in Manitoba had an Isbister scholarship to ensure their ability to attend university. Imagine the wonderful leadership that would ensure for our province. I also observe that we often conceive history according to stereotypes uninformed by our actual stories. Many successful Manitoba families, including my own, owe a huge debt to the Métis educator, philanthropist, and visionary Alexander Kennedy Isbister. We have been asked to answer the question, what is one thing Canadians can do today to make the country better? We can learn the lesson that is so clear from the life and gift of Isbister, support students to attend higher education, and support them as he did without distinction of race, creed, or nationality. In a world on the slippery slope to erecting barriers and borders of judging people once again by the color of their skin or their religion or their nationality, Isbister inspires us to put aside prejudice, fear, and ignorance and embrace our better angels. That was my answer to the question and it was also Isbister's answer and his legacy. Thank you very much.